In this uh, video, we will talk about the process of urine formation. Physiology of urine formation. This process, that is the complete process of urine formation, is known as uropoiesis. That is formation of urine. It is completed in three steps. First is known as ultrafiltration or glomerular filtration. Ultrafiltration or glomerular filtration. That means the filtration which is going to take place through the capillaries of that glomerulus. Second step is selective reabsorption. There are certain important things which would get filtered and those things need to be reabsorbed. And third is known as tubular secretion. The cells of the tubule would help in secretion of certain things. So these are the three steps in which urine formation takes place. We are talking about the first one that is ultrafiltration or glomerular filtration. Ultrafiltration or glomerular filtration. For this, we would draw the structure of the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus to understand how this filtration is going to take place and at which pressure. So if this is the Bowman's capsule, we are not drawing the cells and all. The afferent arteriole brings the blood into this region, this divides, apparent arteriole divides into a set of capillaries and they join to form the efferent arteriole. We have already seen that the diameter of afferent arteriole and efferent are different. Diameter of afferent arteriole is more as compared to efferent and that is why the pressure in the capillaries of the glomerulus is double than any normal capillary. So let us label this part. This is afferent arteriole and this is efferent arteriole. Now there is, as we said, difference. And here in the glomerular capillaries, the pressure is going to be more. And that is why this filtration which is taking place under pressure is known as ultra uh, filtration. We will take up the pressures, the values and then we will count at what pressure this filtration takes place. So first thing, the blood which enters into the afferent arteriole. Blood going in to the afferent arteriole. It has hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure is equal to 60 millimeters of mercury. So this is 60 millimeters. The blood which is coming in to the afferent arteriole is having a hydrostatic pressure of 60 millimeters of mercury. With this pressure the blood enters into the capillaries but there is resistance also. So this is the pressure with which blood is coming in. Now let us talk about the pressures which are exist or which are uh, exerting resistance on this. That means they are acting against this. So number one, <coughs> the pressures which are resisting first is osmotic pressure of the protein present in glomerular capillaries. 
So we are talking of the blood which is coming in. The blood which comes in here is coming with this pressure. The blood which is already there in the capillaries has proteins and the main protein that we are talking of is albumin. So this albumin, it exerts a pressure and this pressure is going to act against this hydrostatic pressure. So here, the blood which is already there, this blood has proteins. So here is this osmotic pressure. Now we would use some abbreviations to explain or to refer to these pressures. Hydrostatic pressure exerted by blood is represented as Pb. Hydrostatic pressure exerted by blood. That means the pressure with which the blood is going into the arterio. Osmotic pressure is represented by PO. The pressure that is osmotic pressure exerted by the protein, especially albumin, which is present in the glomerular capillaries. So this is the osmotic pressure that we are talking of and this pressure is 30 millimeters of mercury. So it is going to act against this pressure. The second resistance is provided by the pressure which is exerted by the liquid which is inside this tube because from here filtration would take place and here also there is some liquid this liquid is going to exert pressure so this would be called hydrostatic pressure exerted by the filtrate and this value is represented by Pc. This value is equal to 10 millimeters of mercury. This is also against this pressure. So this is resistance. Again, we said there are three pressures which are going to create or exert resistance. First is osmotic pressure which is exerted by the protein which is present in the glomerular capillaries. Hydrostatic pressure exerted by the filtrate that also is against it. And the third one, this is the second one. And the third one is hydrostatic pressure exerted by the interstitial fluid. Here outside this tubule, if we make this tubule here. So outside this, there is interstitial fluid. This fluid also exerts pressure. So the third pressure is from this. This is hydrostatic pressure exerted by interstitial fluid. The liquid, the substance or the tissue which is here outside the tubule, that also exerts pressure. This is represented by Pi and this value is also equivalent to 10 millimeters of mercury. So now the filtration is going to take place by calculating. So there is main blood which is coming in with a pressure. There are counter pressures or pressures which are acting as resistance. So let us find out the pressure at which this filtration is going to take place. We will calculate it as Pb, the pressure with which the blood enters. This is the main pressure and then subtract the pressures which are acting as counter pressure. So this means Po plus Pc plus Pi together. So what, have, what are we doing here? We are seeing the pressure with which this filtration, glomerular filtration is going to take place. The blood is entering with some pressure. That pressure is higher. It is 60 millimeters of mercury. But there are certain things which are exerting pressure against this. We call them counter pressures or the pressure which is anti to that pressure. There are three such pressures. First is osmotic pressure. This is exerted by 
the blood which is already there in the capillaries. So blood coming in, pressure countered by the blood which is here and especially the protein part of that blood. This pressure is known as osmotic pressure. We represent it by PO and this value is 30 millimeters of mercury. So it is going to act against it. Second pressure which is going to act against is hydrostatic pressure exerted by the nephric filtrate. The filtrate which is going to get accumulated here. That is also going to act uh, pressure. But that is going to act against it. Third, hydrostatic pressure again exerted by the fluid which is in the interstitial space. That also exerts a counter pressure. So if we have to calculate the pressure at which this filtration is taking place, which we will call glomerular filtration pressure. And how do we calculate? The pressure of the blood coming in and the counter pressures minus. So this is 60 minus total of this. PO is 30 plus this is 10 plus this is also 10. So 30 plus 10, 40 plus 10, 50. So it is 60 minus 50 that is the glomerular filtration pressure is 10 millimeters of mercury. 10 millimeters of mercury at which this glomerular filtration takes place and that is why because it is taking place at pressure we are calling it ultra filtration and as it takes place through the glomerular capillaries we call it glomerular filtration. The reason for this, this pressure generating here is the difference in the diameter of the two tubes. The tube which is bringing the blood is wider as compared to the tube which is taking the blood out is which is a narrower one. So that is why the glomerular capillaries here we can write glomerular capillaries have double pressure have double pressure as compared to normal capillaries as compared to normal capillaries and the reason for this is this diameter difference. So first step of urine formation is ultrafiltration. What has happened in ultrafiltration? Filtration of blood taking place through glomerulus under pressure. The pressure at which this filtration takes place GFP is glomerular filtration pressure and we have calculated it as 10 millimeters of mercury. So this is the pressure at which filtration takes place through glomerulus. Now a quick recap of what has happened is through the afferent arteriole blood comes into the glomerulus. Diameter of afferent arteriole is wider and the blood which comes in comes in with a pressure of 60, sorry, 60 millimeters of mercury. This is hydrostatic pressure of blood. We represent it with PB. There are three pressures which are acting against it. That means these pressures they create resistance. Which are these three pressures which are creating resistance? First is osmotic pressure. The pressure created by the protein that is present in the glomerular capillaries. This, these capillaries already have blood. So this blood and its protein, it uh, exerts a pressure which is acting as a counter pressure. This is represented by PO and the value is 30 millimeters of mercury. The second pressure which is acting against it or creating or causing resistance is hydrostatic pressure exerted by nephric filtrate we represent it by pc and the value is 10 millimeters third hydrostatic pressure exerted by the interstitial fluid we represent it by pi and the value is again 10 millimeters so when we calculate glomerular filtration pressure 
it is the pressure with which the blood comes in that is pb minus the anti pressures or the pressures which are creating resistance so when we calculate it we come to the figure of this 10 so this is glomerular filtration pressure that is 10 millimeters of mercury and the liquid which has come here is the nephric filtrate now we will come to the next step that is selective reabsorption and before we start with this we will also talk about what all things get filtered here 